Eric, the machine grew on us. I tried to look inside and I fell inside. I know, you're so tiny in there. Worth it though. I yeah, feel like a machinist uh, again. Yeah, you wipe your hands off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Let's get to the point. That's why everyone's watching. Eric, we're here to talk about a spinner machine. You and I were on camera not too long ago talking about a yes, smaller sir. model, but describing this one because yes, we sir. wanted to talk bigger because everything in Texas is bigger. Everything. So let's talk about this machine. Yeah, absolutely. I love this machine. Um, like we said in the last video, I mean, everybody knows the small one, the 65 and the 45 millimeter. And you think, oh, 65 to 85, which is what this one is, can't be that much bigger. A lot bigger. It's a lot bigger. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a monstrous difference, right? And so uh, on this one here, this is an 85 millimeter. What I mean by that is that is our bore capacity of the, of the bar we can swallow. And that is not just a, a uh, on one spindle. This is not a sub spindle, it's a true second spindle. So that is 85 millimeter through and through. And then we also go to a 125 millimeter. So basically three on, on an 85 millimeter, we're 3.3-ish inches. On a 125 millimeter, we are upwards of five inches now, right? And that is all the way through. Wow, I think about that and I'm, I'm now doing comparisons in my mind, right? Because we talk about one being bigger than the other and we, right. we talk about the industries that you work in regularly. We, were, we were here to educate the local audience, the, the world right. we keep talking about the 65 range. It's, yes. it's an easy one to move, it's, we put it in trade shows, sure. it becomes common information. But seeing this firsthand, and that's why I was actually in the machine because I wanted the audience to see how big this is as yep. well. Yep. What happens when we get to that 125? Oh, I mean, man. I can only imagine the capacity and capability that a machinist can do there. <laughs> That's absolutely right. And the neat thing about Spinner is that it is ultimately configurable. So we can do two upper turrets, an upper and a lower turret. We can do three turrets like this one. We can do four turrets. We can get rid of the turrets and put a big old steady rest down here. When you're working with big parts, big diameter parts, whether we're swallowing it or we're chucking it between centers, having to be able to have a steady rest in there, it's, it's just the flexibility of what a spinner gives you, it's a complete package. Yeah, and to add on to that, I listen a lot. It's my job to listen. Everyone thinks I talk a lot, but my Two job is actually mile. to listen, right? Yeah. And I was talking to some of your customers, some excited about potential purchases and some that existingly have confirmed the, the excitement of the potential customers. Yes, sir. And it repeated over and over again where the fr f footprint of the machine, although we look at this and it looks this like a good huge, size, right? yeah. it looks like a good size, but all things considered, there's more workspace inside the machine to get parts done when we think maybe four turrets. When we think a steady rest, we have to have the space for it. We absolutely do. And we have that just in the inherent design of the machine. And also in little things like, okay, this is a Y axis in the upper turrets, right? Mm -hmm. It's a true Y axis. We actually get more range in our Y axis than our competitors do, right? So yes, from a volumetric size, yeah, it's bigger. We got more, just the way it's designed here, but also in the kinematics and the way that the slides work. Yeah, and, and something else I want to bring up that I've, I've heard, and I think it's overlooked, and you can confirm this for me if you'd like to, or you can be like, Tony, you're an idiot. You're, you're welcome to do that as well. He does that off camera, don't <laughs> yeah. tell anyone. But we're just having fun, of course. But is the chip conveyor. Yo, the chip conveyor huge. is wide. Yep. It's going to be able to remove everything. And if you look on the far side, it actually has an increased height to yep. make sure that you're getting all those chips out. I've walked into shops where they're changing. They're more frustrated about the chip bins than they are the machine itself. Okay, but here's the cool thing, right? All right. First off, that chip conveyor should be out of a horizontal machining center. So it's huge, right? Yeah. I mean, you crawled right in it. We, <laughs> we, we, could have, we could have chip conveyed you right on out of here. That's right. Here's the neat thing though, right? You mentioned that's a high buy on that. We can actually put a low boy on that thing. Why is that important, Tony? Because if we're running some long pipe, let's say we're doing an extra long perf gun and we want to run that thing all the way through, we have the ability to run straight out the back side of the machine with a lower chip conveyor over the top. And that gives us that flexibility too. Clever. See, come on, that's the flexibility we're talking about with I think I could present you almost anything and you'd have a great answer to it because it's this is the, this as you said, the flexibility, well, right? Well, can I add one more thing that we haven't talked about? Absolutely. The live tooling on this machine. Let's talk about that. Okay, so I know we're talking about turning, we're talking about big parts. Oftentimes the ability to incorporate live tooling is very important. As I mentioned, we have Y axis on top. Okay, well, everybody has live tooling, Eric. Why are you making such a fuss about it? Because on the 85 and the 125, it's 26 horsepower. That is a mill inside of this on live tools doing live tool work. So we got flats, we got some drilling, we got some tapping, we got some thread milling, we've got uh, some you know, convoluted shapes, this can do it. And I'm not being bogged down by the restrictions of torque and horsepower. No, That's sir. incredible. No, sir. Well, very much like this conversation, 
I would be your standard life tooling, and you would be 26 horsepower <laughs> as he flexes and finishes That's off. That's right. Eric, thank you so much yes, for your thank time. You. My hand's a little it. dirty yeah. from no, being anytime. inside of it. <laughs> thank you so much, and thank you all for watching. If you have more questions, there's a reason why customers keep puffing out their chest to say, I can do what no one else can do, or I can do it faster or more creatively. It's the gift of Spinner, and Eric keeps showing me these customers that are happy about their investment. So check them out. Don't just take it from Eric and I, but Eric is a great advocate for understanding how these things can actually work in your shop as well. We'll see you again soon.